What's up, everybody? I've got another core leadership concept for you. And today we are talking about over communication or working hard to communicate. So many of our problems stem from not communicating well. And as we're going to see, the scripture actually teaches us that if we're wise, we're going to spend a lot of time communicating. It says in Proverbs 15, 7, the lips of the wise spread knowledge. Let me give you four ways that you and I can be wise and spread knowledge to help people and to help the organization. Here's number one, tell people about changes early. Sometimes we're afraid to communicate change because we instinctively know a lot of people don't like change. Uh, but the truth is you can't get around change. You can't stop the flow. Things are going to change. And the more time we give people to emotionally process that and even get counsel to, uh, in terms of what they're going to do about that change, the better off they're going to be. So tell people about changes early. Here's number two. Give people context. Man, there's a lot of conversations going on. Like there's just a lot going on. Sometimes you're in one conversation and it's related to another conversation, but it's not really the same conversation. And so sometimes we have to come to people and say, hey, um, you know the thing, the background here, here's what has happened, and now this is what we're trying to understand, or this is what's happened, and I need you to weigh on in this thing, or I need you to understand this. We want to make sure that we give people context so that we're actually not miscommunicating and talking about two separate things, and we're all up to date. So take the time to give people context. Here's number three. Communicate it several times. Not only do we have to have, tell people early, not only do we have to give people the context, but we've got to understand often we think we've communicated something, but that's just because we remember saying it. That doesn't mean they've heard it enough to really hear it. So Andy Stanley says, hey, you need to communicate something seven times before people are even hearing it for the first time. And I'm definitely finding that to be true. So what do we need to do? We need to say, hey, I'm going to communicate this via email, but then I'm probably going to put it in a text. And then I'm also going to put it over here in this other you know, form of media so that people are really beginning, oh, this is a thing. Why? Because it has to break through the noise in people's uh, atmosphere because we're all hearing so many messages. So we've got to have patience. You've got to know you've got to keep communicating multiple times. What's the last one? The last one is we've got to use clarifying language. So sometimes we're afraid to talk to somebody because we're like, I feel like they think about it a little bit differently than I do. And I, I, you know, we just hold back a little bit. And that can't stop our communication. Instead, we need to use clarifying language. And this is what I mean. When you approach somebody, you say, hey, you know, you lead with something like this. Hey, can we confirm or can we clarify, or this is how I've understood it, but I've been wrong before, so how do you see what is happening? What is your understanding of this situation? Can we get on the same page so that we can move this conversation forward? So let's use clarifying language every time we can. So what do we do? Here's the four, remember? Tell people about changes early, give people context, communicate several times, and use clarifying language. And my friends, if we will do this, what we will see is that God's word is right and we will demonstrate godly wisdom by working hard at communication. And if we demonstrate godly wisdom, God's smile and blessing is going to be on us and on the organization. See you next time.